All right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, happy beer, wine, apps, and Zoom night, everyone. Robert, thanks for having me. Kevin, thanks for having me. Um, we're excited at the opportunity to work with you guys on the backwoods adventure side of things, uh, as well as on the retail side, um, and, and really tickled to, to partner with you. Uh, before we get too carried away, I just want to let you know this evening we're going to be talking about, of course, fly fishing for bass in the fall, but overall fall fly fishing conditions. Um, I'm going to be focusing more on fishing Texas rivers. Um, this scenario is going to be primarily the Brazos, uh, but we'll use it as an example that you can carry forward uh, to hit your favorite fishery with. Um, fish in the fall, <clears throat> we're going to again talk about the river flows, we're going to talk about uh, bait selection, and then briefly at the end we're going to talk about the Texas uh, fly fishing for bass class uh, in central Texas like Robert discussed. Before we get too far in, they've encouraged me to give you a little bit of information about myself. Um, ben Tabor, Fatties on the Fly and Fatties Guide Co. We started this company about four years ago. Um, I was born and raised and grew up on a ranch in between Granbury and Glen Rose, just southwest of Fort Worth. I'm married to my lovely wife, Jericho. We've got two dogs, live in Granbury on the north end of the lake and run the majority of our guide trips uh, on the tailwaters of Lake Granbury, on the Brazos River, and on the Paluxy River. So, river fish in the fall on the fly. Um, as I mentioned today, we're going to be talking about river flows. And the main reason uh, that we are is because the flows dictate what the fish are doing in our river systems, predominantly in Texas. Um, and if we can figure out what the flows are doing and what that means, it's going to help you uh, not only uh, catch more fish, but it's going to keep you from wasting uh, time unnecessarily when you do go out fishing. Um, the second reason I want to talk about flows today is because uh, if you understand the resources that you have available, it'll keep you out of trouble. Secondary, we're going to talk about bait, like I said. Um, but before we dive off into everything, when you first, very first thing you need to do when you get to the river is stop. Take a second and look around. This is a picture of myself. Uh, Zach Irwin, my business partner, and another friend of ours on the Brazos River. We stop, we take a second, see what the bugs are doing, flip some rocks, see what the bugs in the water are doing, see if the bait fish are moving, what the flow looks like, where the eddies are. Just kind of get a game plan together before you even tie a fly on. So that's my bugaboo, but everybody needs to do that. All right. Why are flows so important? One, for safety. Um, we've lost, I can think of at least six people in my stretch of Brazos River this year. Um, so the, the importance of the flows uh, and understanding how to, to read those flows and where to get those flows, um, very, very important. If you look at the top of the screen, if you can see my cursor, uh, the Brazos River Authority is my number one resource and then USGS is secondary. Uh, I also have an app called the River App. Um, but you can go on there. Uh, you don't have to log in. You can also check their Facebook and social media. They've got a lot of information there, but uh, the value for me is knowing when I can't go out because the water's too high and too rough. Um, and also, I like to look at these charts because it'll tell me basically what the fishing's doing without me having to show up. So this is just a screenshot from the Brazos River Basin Now uh, website. It's part of the BRA. Uh, you'll go in there. If you look, you'll find the section of river that you want to fish. This is near Grayford, Palo Pinto, and Dennis. Once you come here, you can see here's some current, you know, since September 11th, here's what the flows have been doing in this portion of the river. Click on it, get a dialed in look. I ran this example out like four, uh, 45 days because I wanted to show you guys um, Fishing for Texas in the fall and why it's different than, than the summertime uh, and some of the other months. If you look back here, August 1 on the far left of this chart, the flows were next to nothing. What that means is it's low flow time. The fish are going to be congregating more in the channels on structure and deeper water, cooler water. Uh, and when it got this low and this bad, they're just trying to hang on and survive. We're going to talk about mid flows or moderate flows, what I would consider ideal conditions, which is if you see here, September 1st, we started to have an increase. We had a rise right before it spiked. That's ideal. You come to the back side of this curve and this falling line, this falling flow rate, that's ideal. These spikes for this portion of the river is too much to fish. 
It's too dangerous to wade. Don't go out. That's why these charts are important. You can also see during this range what the max cubic feet per second is, how fast it's been flowing, um, and what the current cubic feet per second is. So now that we know where to get the information, and we have a general idea of when the best time to fish is, which is these rises and these little falls, we can check these before we go out and not have to waste any time showing up and being disappointed because it's flowing at 15,000 and you didn't think to check it. Okay, here's where we need to focus some of our attention during low, medium, and high flows. Uh, during the low flow portion of the year, the summer, uh, for us this year, it was end of July and all of August, the fish are gonna predominantly be hanging out right here in the pool, in the deep stuff, and maybe in the run. If there is any water moving, uh, they'll be able to get some oxygen there. They'll also be hanging out on the edge of this riprap uh, on this eddy line. Um, again, they can get to deeper, cooler water, but they can still hunt and look for bait uh, along these rocks. If we go back to the map, and we look at moderate conditions or, or what we call ideal flow, and look here, when they're at ideal flow, that means that the water's still manageable. We can still wade in it, but it's moving enough to get the fish active and get them excited. It's bringing oxygen to them. Those higher flows are gonna be bringing them uuh, bugs, which brings in bait, which brings in big fish, and we're gonna slide in right behind them, right here at the end of the riffle and above the run. Uh, this is primarily where the fish are gonna be hanging out, not just largemouth, but striper, sand bass, uh, drum, gas for goo, you name it. So primo conditions, focus your efforts right here. And then as we get to high flow conditions, uh, don't wait it, don't get in the water, but you can still find these little pockets in these little eddies where the water's spinning back on itself, uh, back upstream, and that's where the fish are gonna be hanging out primarily when the flows are, if you see on the far right side of the chart, really, really heavy. Okay. Moving on, here's an example of the graphic I just showed you, a real life example. This is what we'd call the riffle. Right here is gonna be your run. Your deep pull comes over here and your eddies, once the flows get up, are gonna form in this pocket here and they're gonna form in this pocket here. So right now, this is a low flow image. Those fish are predominantly gonna be hanging out on this cut bank in the deeper pool. Right now, the flows are so high, this is probably six feet underwater, and we're not fishing. Be safe, please. All right, here is an image I included for a little bit of virtual scouting. When you guys are looking on your phones or on your computer at, at the flows, um, go ahead and look at aerial. Start identifying some structure that you wanna fish. Be looking for where the mouth of a river, pardon me, the mouth of a creek meets the river. Um, that's gonna deposit bugs, bait, it's gonna deposit silt, which will create pockets and more structure for you to fish. Um, but this is a really, really good section of what I like to fish on the rivers. It's got everything. Okay. As I mentioned, bait is secondary. Uh, the river flows dictate what the fish are doing. Um, the flows get high, the bait fish get out of the way and, and the bigger fish follow them. Uh, but just about any time of the year when I go to this portion of the Brazos, this fly selection in front of you is what you can take. Uh, you can fit most of it in a small pocket fly box and take it with you uh, and feel confident that you're gonna have what you need. Um, typically ranging from size two to size six bait fish. Uh, you want some light, you want some heavy in case the flows um, are a little bit strong, you need to get that fly down. Uh, deceivers and bully boogers, again, always good to have different sizes and different weights. Um, also going to be fishing craw crawfish. Some of my favorites are the Near Enough Craw by Whitlock. And then we've got a pattern called Crawdad Craig that's a jig head pattern uh, that works really, really good uh, fishing the riffle once the flows get moving. Uh, in addition to crawfish and bait fish, it's always good to have some disturbance poppers on you. Um, you know, any foam head poppers, gurglers, deer hair bugs, uh, predominantly size two to size six. Pencil poppers work great when the sand bass are running and we focus primarily on white, black, chartreuse, and frog colored bugs. Now, I know I move quick through that stuff. You'll learn a heck of a lot more if you go ahead and take the time 
to sign up for uh, Backwoods Adventures Texas Bass, Texas Bass Fly Fishing School. It's going to be, let's see, two nights, two days. The first night, we're going to be having a fabulous meal. Um, your accommodations are included in this package. Uh, you're going to have myself and the rest of the Fatties Guide team there answering questions, giving you one-on-one -on -one help that you need. Um, I believe Friday night, we're going to join you guys for dinner, me and the rest of the guides, and get a feel for you, ask you some questions, um, and really kind of dial in exactly what you hope to gain from this experience. Um, but again, Texas Fly Fishing School, brought to you by Backwoods Adventure. We've got guided fly, fly fishing. They're gonna do fly tying one night. It's gonna include your room. It's gonna include your meals. Um, expect to learn something. Uh, we're gonna take some time Saturday morning before we hit the water to stop, pay attention, and see what in the heck's going on before we tie our flies on. This is, all comes back to reading your water and bait selection. So we'll focus on that briefly that morning, turn you loose on the water. Uh, I know everybody's gonna be there to catch some fish and uh, we don't wanna keep you off the water. It's hard to instruct somebody or educate somebody when there's a big body of beautiful fishy looking water right behind them. So uh, we won't educate the, the tar out of you, but you will learn something. If you've got questions, reach out ahead of time as well. Uh, expect some great fishing, expect some top of the line kayaks, expect top notch bass on the fly, uh, on the fly at five star private body of water. This is a beautiful, beautiful ranch and a beautiful piece of private water. Uh, I think it's just over 100 acres. It's got all the structure that you want. It's got uh, rock piles, it's got stumps, it's got a creek that feeds into it, it's got a spillway. It's nice. And again, great accommodations, great company. What to bring? Uh, for your fly rod, I'd bring a six to an eight weight rod and reel with floating line. Uh, if you don't have any, Backwoods has got you. I'd bring two X and no X leader. Um, I'd bring fluorocarbon tippet. I'd bring two X and no X again. Uh, not super picky about having fluorocarbon. Like Guillermo mentioned last week, it's nice to have uh, just because it is a little bit more abrasion resistant. And when these bass start hanging around structure, which they very well could do while we're there, we're gonna be beating the banks and beating up the structure trying to find them and you're gonna get some flies hung. So prepare for it. Fly selection, the same flies I just mentioned, bait fish, crawfish, uh, and poppers, frog poppers, anything like that. We need to be able to hit them shallow in the morning and depending on what the weather's doing, we need to be able to reach down deep and get them as the day progresses. Other things to bring, polarized sunglasses, some UPF, SPF gear. Uh, it's Texas, so it could be 60 that morning or it could be 98. That's hard to say. Pay attention to the weather, dress accordingly. I'm a layers guy, uh, but always wear, have pants or at least some pants that you can turn into shorts in case you get hot. Bring some bug spray, sunscreen, rain gear, just in case. If it gets crummy, we won't fish in it. Safety is number one. And then bring some footwear that you can get wet. Chacos, Tevas, some flats boots, uh, if you don't have any of that stuff, you can pick it up at Backwoods in Fort Worth or in Oklahoma City. And I was notified today, exciting news, that uh, if you sign up by tomorrow afternoon, Backwoods is going to throw in a $100 gift card. So if you don't have any of that stuff I was talking about earlier, you got $100 to throw at it at Backwoods. Um, but that's my spiel. That's all I've got. If you've got questions, uh, about the upcoming class, reach out to me or reach out to the Backwoods staff. This is all my contact information. You can also reach me on Instagram and Facebook. Direct message me. Uh, Any way you'll come back to me and I'd be happy to answer your questions uh, or concerns or general disgust for that matter. But uh, Kevin, Robert, and the Backwoods crew, thank you guys so much for having me. I can't tell you how much we appreciate the opportunity to present tonight as well as educate some of uh, the backwoodies uh, at the upcoming Texas Bass on the Fly School. Um, if I remember correctly, it's 895, but check out Backwoods Adventures. They'll get all the details for you or check on my post. Thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in and happy beer, wine, appetizers, and Zoom night. Thanks, Ben. Great job. Appreciate you. You bet, pal. Have a good evening. You too.